Hey guys, this is the MMA breakdown with my predictions for UFC Fight Night 46, McGregor versus Brandau. Um, this is a fight pass card um, taking place in Dublin and taking place next Saturday, not this Saturday. Um, I think it's a pretty poor card. Uh, I think all the UFC Fight Pass cards um, going into them, uh, I've been pretty down on them. Um, and this one, it's just, uh, you know, not even mid-level guys, um, you know, lower-level guys. Um, even the main event, I'm not that excited for. And uh, I said the same thing for the New Zealand card, and uh, people always think... Uh, I'm down on it because I don't think much of uh, the local talent from where these fight pass cards are taking place, um, which is just a stupid thing to say. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't care where the card's taking place. Uh, you know, I care about the guys who are who are already in the UFC who are on the card, and um, on this card there's just not a lot of uh, UFC fighters that uh, I, I really care about or that are set to do really big things. Um, Gunnar Nelson being the exception. Um, but other than that, uh, and Conor McGregor as well. But other than that, it's just a, a lot of um, low-level guys. But let's get right into it. I'll try to go through this pretty quickly um, and give you my predictions. So starting off on the preliminary card at flyweight, Patrick Holohan versus Josh Sampo. Holohan's a newcomer. I uh, don't know anything about him. Just looking at his record, I think he's nine and zero. Has uh, several um, uh, TKOs and submission wins. Uh, Josh Sampo has had two fights in the UFC's debut. He got a submission over Ryan Benoit, where I thought he looked uh, fairly good. Um, seemed like a pretty good uh, wrestler, grappler, and I was able to get the finish over Benoit. And then uh, lost to Zach Makovsky, who I still think we're all really underrating. I think he's a top contender at flyweight. Um, and uh, Makovsky was able to out-wrestle Sampo, but uh, it wasn't really a surprise. Um, yeah, so I uh, still haven't seen too much of Sampo. And Holohan, Hola uh, I don't know anything about, so I'm not comfortable making a pick here. So, uh, I'm not going to make a pick. And next up, a light heavyweight, Cody Donovan, taking on Nikita Krylov. Um, two pretty low-level guys, although both have had good performances in the UFC. Cody Donovan got a knockout over um, uh, Nick Penner in his debut. Um, his next fight against Ovin St. Pru was actually looking okay. Um was pressing uh, Pru up against the fence um, using some dirty boxing, but then got uh, taken down and knocked out very quickly with ground and pound. And then against John Volante, it was actually looking really good, um, catching Volante with a lot of stuff uh, that was visibly hurting him. Um, but then Volante just uncorked a hook that uh, put um, Donovan out cold. And um, that was Volante's... Uh, that was his best win in the UFC, and that was also Donovan's best performance. But um, I think his chin might uh, be a bit compromised now after suffering those knockouts. But uh, um, Nikita Krylov, on the other hand, um, debuted at heavyweight against Sol Pileli. Looked absolutely terrible. Um, was able to get Pileli in a crucifix on the ground at one point, um, but on the feet, uh, both guys gassed terribly in that fight, but Pileli was eventually able to connect, um, knock him out. Uh, he then uh, rebounded with a good win over Walt Harris. Um, really early first round finish, landed the head kick and put him out. Um, and then dropped down to light heavyweight to fight Ovin St. Preux, which was a terrible idea. Um, St. Preux submitting him with a Von Flu choke, which uh, just shows how inexperienced and um, really how uh, low-level Nikita Krylov still is. Um, 
I think it's a winnable fight, though, for both guys. Um, Donovan, uh, I don't know, both guys, I think, have power. Um, Krylov, I think, is the bigger power. Donovan has uh, shown decent striking. Um, he has a knockout win himself, like I said, over Penner. Uh, Krylov, I think, has some better ways to win, but... Um, you know, that Von Flew choke um, showed really he's prone to mental breakdowns. Um, uh, gosh. Um, I think I'm going to go with Krylov. Uh, I think Donovan's chin um, is a little compromised, been knocked out in his last couple of fights. And then Krylov lands something and uh, puts him out. Next up at middleweight, Tor Troen taking on Trevor Smith. Tor Troen, veteran of Tough 17, um, got knocked out by Josh Saman in the house. Um, and then the UFC fought uh, Adam Sella, who was also from Tough 17. Um, got a rear naked choke over him, I believe, in the first round. And then um, had a tough fight with Rafael Natal. Um, went to a decision, but... Natal was able to um, outposition him on the ground, and uh, Natal won that fight. Trevor Smith um, had a real tough uh, decision um, loss against Ed Herman. That fight was a brawl. Both guys pretty much striking recklessly. Um, pretty razor thin fight, I thought. Then against Brian Houston, um, that win came uh he had a lot of difficulty getting that win um basically out wrestled uh houston uh wouldn't stand with him and um i remember him getting kind of busted up even though they didn't spend much time on the feet um and tallis latest knocked him out uh real fast in their fight um in the first round uh just blitzed him and um trevor smith uh didn't get to compete at all there um Kind of a, a tough fight, um, interesting style matchup. I think uh, Troen, I think, I don't know, I want to say Troen might have the better ground game. He was able to uh, get on top of Natal a few times in their fight, uh, but Smith showed uh, fair wrestling against Brian Houston. Um, boy, uh I'm going to take Tor Troen. Uh, I think he's a little more durable. Smith was put out uh, in his last fight in the first round. Knocked out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take Tor Troen. Um, but real close fight to call. Um, either guy could win. Next up, a fight. A uh, pair of uh, tough veterans from the most recent season. Tough 19. Middleweight fight. Cajal Pendry taking on Mike King. Um, Mike King uh, just seemed to be an average fighter. He beat uh, Norden Taleb uh, to get into the house and then lost to the eventual eventual winner, Mike Gordon. Mike King just seems to be an average kickboxer. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't, we didn't see any ground game, I think, in the Eddie Gordon fight, and I, I don't think he showed it against Taleb either, but... Um, Average kickboxer pretty much fights at the same pace throughout the whole fight. Um, throws some leg kicks, um, some strikes at distance, but uh, really doesn't do anything too creative. Um, and Eddie Gordon showed that uh, he can really be shut down with uh, distance striking. And Cajal Pendred, um, he won his fight against uh, Hector Urbina. Um, where he just looked to take him down and um, couldn't do it too easily and tried to do the same thing to Eddie Gordon. Um, all this guy tried to do in the tough house was push people up against the fence and try to take him down, and he wasn't very effective with it. Really didn't look uh, to engage on the feet much. Um, so I think Mike King is going to have the advantage standing. 
I think he has the better kickboxing. Um, but Cajal, Hen Cajal Pendred might be able to um, out-clinch him, make it dirty, maybe get him to the ground. Uh, tough fight. Another tough one to call. Uh, I'm going to go with Mike King, though. I just... Pendred, uh, as much as him looking to push guys up against the fence so much, 100% of the time, I think uh, you know, he's just... I think that might mean that he's not a very good striker. So I'm going to go with Mike King to win a decision. Next up, a flyweight. Um, one of the better fights on the card. Neil Siri taking on Phil Harris. I'm excited to see Neil Siri get back at it. Um, he really surprised me against Brad Pickett um, in his debut. Uh, outstruck uh, Brad Pickett. Um, Brad Pickett, the the brawler. Um, Brad one punch Pickett and Neil Siri uh, really dominated him with the boxing. Seemed to have really great hand speed, um, good combinations. Um, I was really just uh, very accurate with his striking, uh, but couldn't stop the takedowns of Brad Pickett. Phil Harris, on the other hand, I think he's one of the worst fighters at flyweight. Um, he's basically been a punching bag. Um, got submitted by Darren Uyenoyama in his debut. Had a very uneventful decision one against Ulysses Gomez, where all I remember is him uh, throwing leg kicks. Um, and really nothing much happened in that fight. John Lineker uh, finished him with strikes in the first round, and Louis Gaudineau um, submitted him in the first round with a uh, standing guillotine, a uh, flying guillotine choke. Um, so Phil Harris, I think, a pretty low-level talent in the UFC. Um, so I'm taking Neil Siri. I think he outstrikes him and uh, gets a finish. Next up, a light heavyweight, Ilya Latifi, taking on Chris Dempsey. Um, Ilir Latifi took that fight against uh, um, Gegard Mousasi on very short notice and uh, did well to not get finished, but um, didn't look too impressive either and uh, actually wasn't too high on him. But then in his next fight against uh, um, Surreal Diabate, Ilir Latifi looked pretty good and showed uh, that he... I think can be a decent fighter in the UFC. Um, got a power guillotine choke in that fight, I believe it was in the first round. Um, took Latifi down and was able to cinch up that guillotine choke, put him out, uh, <clears throat> retired Diabate, <clears throat> and looked, uh, looked pretty strong. Um, Chris Dempsey, I don't know anything about. I um, actually didn't get a chance to look up his record, so I'm just going to do that real quickly. Um, hold on here. Okay, Chris Dempsey, 10 and 1. Um, Doesn't have any wins over guys I've heard of, uh, so really uh, can't tell anything about him from his resume. But uh, I am gonna take, I am gonna make a pick here. I'm gonna take Iller Latifi. I think he looked pretty solid against uh, Diabate, who's a uh, been a tough veteran and has, uh, you know, had some wins over uh, over guys in the UFC who um, are a lot younger than him. Uh, Tom DeBlas and uh, some other guys too. Luis uh, Kane. Um, it's kind of separated the really low-level guys from uh, really getting established in the UFC. So uh, it's pretty. I think a, a win over him is solid, and Latifi finished him. So uh, I'm taking Latifi here. Um, but again, don't know anything about Dempsey. Moving on to the main card at lightweight, Norman Park, Norman Storman Park taking on. Nayuki Kotani, Kotani uh, debuting. Don't know anything about him. Uh, th wow, 33 and 10 uh, and 7, 50 professional fights. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, I see a loss against Jorge Masvidal here. 
Um, lost to Tiago Tavares, lost to Dennis Seaver, uh, Roger Huerta, Eves Edwards. So basically, you can't beat any American fighters. Um, also lost to Rich Clemente, Marcus Aurelio, former UFC guys. Um, okay, I guess that paints a little bit of a better picture. Um, he's had uh, a streak here of about four straight submission wins uh, and is on a crazy, uh, what is this? 13 fight win streak, I think. But uh, Norman uh, Storm and Park um, won the tough smashes, which was really just a joke of a season. Um, beat Colin Fletcher to win that uh, show and um, really didn't look that great uh, doing it. Um, th those guys fought at a pretty methodical pace. Um, Park got a few takedowns and uh, on the sh in the house he beat uh, Richie Vasilek. Um, can't remember who the who the other guy he uh, beat was. I think maybe uh, Brendan Lockney, but uh, not sure. But um, yeah, uh, I'm not uh, a big believer in Norman Park. Um, his last couple uh, fights, I didn't think he looked impressive at all, really, um, even though he won them. Um, his striking looks very rudimentary um, against Kazuki Tokidome. Just looked very stiff. Um, tried to get the takedown, but couldn't. Um, his stri striking looked very stiff. Then against John Tuck, um, who is a better fighter and a fairly decent um, low-level fighter in the UFC. Um, Park really poured it on him and dominated with the striking, but still just doesn't seem to have much technique with the striking. It was just a lot of, uh, you know, one-two. Um, doesn't really mix it up. Doesn't have any real good combinations. Um, and doesn't seem to really be able to implement a wrestling game in there with the striking. So um, I'm not a big believer in Park, um, but uh, just looking at Katani's record um, doesn't seem to be a very good fighter. Um, you know, I don't mean any offense uh, by saying this, but um, I don't really trust uh, Japanese MMA. Uh, I don't think it's very high level, um, especially the guys that come into the UFC. I mean, there are some a couple of good guys, but uh, in general, uh, you know, I just don't think those guys are on the, I don't think they're circuit over there. I don't think it's the same level of competition. Um, I don't think it's comparable to the UFC or to, you know, even Brazilian, for example, the Brazilian circuit, but um, I'll take Norman Park. Uh, I just don't think he's uh, been developing too well and against Leonardo Santos again um, should have won that fight he was deducted a point for something I think grabbing the shorts or yeah grabbing Santos's shorts Park should have won that but again just doesn't look really dominant isn't able to hurt guys with his striking um, and his wrestling what she showed a little bit of in the house um, uh, hasn't really been able to make use of it in the UFC And moving on to the co-main event, Gunnar Nelson taking on Zach Cummings. I think this is a squash match. Uh, i got to take Gunnar Nelson. Um, I think he's going to have a fairly easy time with Zach Cummings. Um, looked real good in his debut over, uh, win over Demarcus Johnson. Um, I think he, he came out with that sideways karate stance, uh, landed a kick, took him down, uh, took his back and submitted him. Uh, very cleanly, looked great. Then against uh, Jorge Santiago, uh, didn't look so great. Um, I can't remember if he took him down much in that fight. I think he fought most of that on the feet, and Santiago uh, cracked him with a, a big shot 
right at the end of the fight in the third round that I believe knocked Gunnar Nelson down. Um, and then against Omari Akhmedov in his last fight looked great. Uh, Show that great uh, wrestling game and submission game. Took Akhmedov down um, and was able to submit him with a guillotine choke in the first round. Uh, so Gunnar Nelson, I think, is really a super talent, um, even though he's yet to really get a big win over um, a top guy. But um, he's working his way up. And Zach Cummins, um, maybe I think he'll be. He, he could be very well be the the toughest opponent that uh, toughest opponent that um, Nelson's had yet. Um, veteran of Tough 17. I think he got finished by Dylan Andrews in the house. And since coming in, into the UFC, had a nice uh, Darce choke submission over Ben Alloway. And then against Jan Cabral, who's a, a grappling specialist um, from Tough Brazil, too. Um, did some good stuff with his guard early on. Uh, I think he got Cummings in a triangle. Um, but Cummings was really able to outmuscle him and uh, just use his top control in wrestling to win the decision there and stay out of submissions. Um, didn't really implement uh, any of his own submissions there in that fight. Um, but I gotta go with Gunnar Nelson. Uh, I just think he's gonna be the better wrestler. Um, far more skilled than Cummings, although Cummings uh, seems to have a decent grappling and submission game of his own, but uh, gotta go with Gunnar Nelson. I think he's uh, gonna do big things in the future. Um, real high on uh, Gunnar Nelson. And the main event, Conor McGregor taking on Diego Brandao in a featherweight fight. Um, uh, McGregor versus uh, um, Cole Miller was a lot more interesting to me. Um, and I think Mc I got to take McGregor here. I don't see Brandao winning this. Um, Max Holloway, uh, I think one of the most underrated fighters in the UFC. Um, I was really high on him, and um, seeing McGregor dominate him the way he did um, really proved to me that McGregor is a serious talent. Um, had a, that real quick knockout win over Marcus Brimage, where he looked great. And Brimage is a, is a solid fighter for a tough veteran. But then Max Holloway, um, who's, been, who's been doing very well since he lost to McGregor, um, uh, McGregor really shut him down. Um, Holloway, who's an, an an unorthodox striker himself, he couldn't figure out uh, McGregor's game. McGregor was very fast with his combinations. Um, when he threw flurries, uh, timed them very well. Was just way too fast and uh, seemed to hit too hard for Holloway. Um, really shut down Holloway's striking game. Uh, looked great and even got a takedown in that fight, I think. Um, Brandao, on the other hand, uh, I think he's overrated. Um, the only performances I was really impressed with, uh, aside from the whatever happened in the Tough House, was winning uh, the show with the, the great armbar he had over Dennis Bermudez right after being dropped um, by a big punch. Then lost to Darren Elkins. And... Um, had a win over Joey Gambino where he never came close to finishing him. Um, and Gambino is just, uh, I don't think he's in the UFC anymore, so, you know, not a great performance there. Against Pablo Garza, I thought he looked really good. I thought Garza was a solid fighter when he was in the UFC. Um, Brandao took him down and submitted him with ease with a tri with an arm triangle choke. Um, but then against Daniel Pineda... Um, just gassed terribly. Um, he did win that fight, but Pineda was able to mount him a few times. Looked like he might have finished him. And then against Poirier, uh, missed weight um, and got knocked out in the first round. Um, McGregor, I think, uh, I don't know. Brandao seems to have uh, you know a lot of problems other than, you know, his performance in the cage, like missing weight. Um, you know, I didn't like that he threatened Poirier uh, and they're threatening to stab him or whatever. Um, seems to be a very angry guy. Uh, did some stuff in the tough house, but um, 
just really hasn't had great performances in the UFC. Um, you know, and uh, Conor McGregor, again, I think is a serious talent. Uh, really impressed me with his win over Holloway, dominating him. Um, I think he'll be able to take Brandau down. Um, and on the feet, uh, Brandau, he likes to make it a brawl. But um, McGregor, I think, will be more composed. Um, who knows how the layoff will affect him. Uh, it's not even a year-long layoff. Um, but I think uh, McGregor will get it done. I think he's a top prospect. Um, and I do think he's going to be a contender pretty soon at featherweight. So I'm taking McGregor here. All right, guys. Those are my predictions for UFC Fight Night 46. Also, UFC Fight Night Dublin, McGregor versus Brandau. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Please like the video, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out my picks for UFC Fight Night 45, Cerrone versus Miller. Um, and I'll be back with my predictions for UFC on Fox 12. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.